sketches and who don't have reasons to be known and he actually chooses them and says you know what you are going to be the person who's going to write this and I think that for me is really beautiful and that's something that I don't need the kind of status that Muhammad had um, for the people that wrote the Gospels. I, I, I just don't think that's, that's the, the heart of the God of the Bible. He elevates people who are, you know, in relative obscurity. These people, they're fishermen, right? They're just fishermen. There's no reason for why we would know anything about them because up until they became disciples, no one had a reason to document who they were because yeah. they were just everyday people. And I think okay. for me, as someone who's, I mean, I don't have a PhD, I'm an everyday person. You know, the people in the street, the, the, the beggars, the, the people who um, have no status in society, I think the God of the Bible sees them and says, actually, you know what, I'm going to choose you. And humanity, people have not looked at you and thought you were worthy, but I think you're worthy. Good. And I see that throughout the New Testament, that's kind of how God picks people. And I think that, you know, Muhammad had a lot of status, he had a lot of money, he had a lot of influence. <laughs> okay. And that's a, fine. a lot of people in the New Testament just don't. And, okay. and I think that's a reason can I, why we can don't I, have can I a say, lot of if you finish, identity. Yeah. Okay. Actually, that's totally, what do you mean, that's totally wrong. For, for a few reasons. I didn't talk about their status. In fact, in Islam, in Islam, Allah in Islam raised the status of people who are insignificant in the society. Like Bilal was one of one, an Abyssinian slave, and he became he was the one who was the caller of the Adhan, which we call five times a day. And when the Prophet peace be upon him, he conquered Mecca. Actually, that he was the one who made the, the Prophet told him to climb on top of Kaaba, where the people they didn't have the privilege even to go around Kaaba. He told him to climb on Kaaba. He was an Abyssinian slave. So Islam not actually changed the status of the people. We're not talking about we're not talking about the status of John. Oh my, we're talking about who are they? Yeah. So you I see, the point that, is, no, I, 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 let me finish. I, I, if I can just clarify, I, yeah, I'm sorry, okay. I, you know, of course, there, I think that that's a really lovely thing then that Islam and, and Christianity have in common, that, that elevation of the everyday person. I think we can agree that that's a reason for understanding God as a merciful and loving God. And I think that we both agree on that. But I think it's just a purely logistical answer to your question why don't we know these things about their lives why don't we know who I, I didn't their ask about their lives but, but, but you know what I mean that identity card that sense of no, like I, 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 genealogy I think the reason one of the reasons perhaps why we don't have that for everyone who wrote in the New Testament is just because they like I said were humble fishermen and there was good, no good. Reason you mentioned they were fishermen correct yeah how do you know if you don't know them you said they're fishermen you said they're disciples how do you know they're disciples how do you know if you don't know them how do you know they were disciples if you don't know them, how do you know they were fishermen? If you don't know nothing about, you have no no information whatsoever yeah. about them. You know, it's, listen, yeah. I'm not talking about their identity card or whatever. I'm talking about you don't know them. Well, you were talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I responded yeah, yeah. to that. And now we're changing the argument Yes, slightly. yes. My, yeah. And that's fine. I can respond to the new argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, listen, listen. say that I'm not answering your question. No, 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 no. You I'm are. No, I know you try to answer. The question is, my point is, even, even Christian scholars couldn't answer the question. The point is, you impose, as, not you as a person, but a Christian, people who believe in Christianity, they impose certain things about them, about the, the four gospels, the authors, or not the author, because they say according to, because it means, when I say according to, it means someone is writing from them. Okay, fair enough. Someone is writing from those four individuals. Everyone wrote for Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad never wrote. The, uh, Muhammad. We'll come to Islam. We'll come to Islam about it. No, but that's not the point. The point is, we we wanted to know yeah. about now here when we when we are talking about the Gospel of John, for example. You are saying the Gospel was one of the disciples. That's what you say. You believe G G John maybe was one no, of the fishermen. That that's one option for who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now here we say, if you don't know who is John, how did you assume he is one of the disciples? If you don't know who is John, no, how? We said we didn't know. We said that that was an option yeah, for who he yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so that's why we have we have something even in the academic level, which was introduced as, by the way by the Muslims in the past, which is if there is a probability, it neglects. The consequence, meaning if I say, you probably, you, for example, if I say to you, uh, let's say, the Prime Minister came to the park, probably, you know, he probably come to the, or is coming, came to the park, and another person said, so he, he didn't come to the park. So we have, 
we have two statements to say maybe he is and maybe he didn't. So it neglects, it doesn't matter if he came to the bank, didn't we just neglect the consequence until we get a fact. If we have a fact, then we deal with it. So going back to the point, if we don't know if he's disciple, and if we don't know if he was or wasn't disciple, so we cannot assume he is a disciple, so because we don't know him. And as again, to, uh, to your assumption, you mentioned that he might be one of the fishermen. Again, we don't know. If they will, they will talk about the details about Jesus ate fish from some one of the fishermen of those and then he taught him the gospel, whatever. You don't know who is this guy, you don't know who is he, and you don't know how do you assume that it, this, this incident took place. So when you don't know the author, when you don't know who is this person, you don't know nothing about it, you don't know anything that whatsoever any link to Jesus, if this person was linked to Jesus or not, we don't know. So because of this, we cannot assume knowledge on certain things which is already ambiguous. That's my point. So that's why men, none of the Christians are, were able to respond about who's John. Who's he? And they have these five assumptions. Was he John the Baptist? Was he someone else? No one knows. Literally, no one knows. It's not going to be John the Baptist. It's not John the Baptist. Yeah, definitely. Bad, what about? Yeah, I know, but no one knows. Literally, no one knows. What about? Because you have, you believe in miracles. God reason, could give John the Baptist his head back again and go yeah. back to, 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 read the, to write the gospel. No one knows. Sure. So because no one knows, and because there's ambiguity about the persons, because there's ambiguity about how do we assume that this knowledge, which is apparently contradictory between all of the four Gospels and in, in certain things, and as well some of them copied from each other according as well to some of the Christian authors. So to say, how do we know that this is the Word of God? How do we assume if it's the Word of God if we don't know even who wrote it? If we don't know what happened to it? So that's why they say... But how would it help? Yeah. Huh? I suppose, you, suppose you're questioning whether the, the Gospel is the Word of God, and then we can say, okay, we know who this person was, who made it. Okay. Interesting. So I think okay. uh, I think Thomas asking. Yeah, what you were saying? I was just gonna say I don't. So suppose you are questioning whether this is the word of God, right? So for example, suppose that. Yeah. So suppose you are questioning whether the gospels are the word of God, and suppose we could provide. You know, suppose I could provide information to you that, you know, one of the answers to the gospels. We know who he is. We know who his family was. We know where he was and which events he saw, which he heard from other people. That would not change your view about whether this was the no, word no, of God. No, 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 right? no. Actually, so I don't really understand actually, why. Actually, actually, I will tell you something. I will tell you something. If we know that there are people, when, before that, if we know, we know, we know those people. We know they are known. They are well known. They are disciples. Then it might be look at it from different angle. But actually, we don't know. We don't know because of this. What, and there is, what would what there difference is, would that make? It, the difference is a big difference. Firstly, it will be not the Bible. Will be not the Bible that we we are seeing it today. We it will be you're not imposed. That. You're assuming. That. I assume that no, the same. Not if it's true. The same. The same. You assume it's, it is well, the other way around. So we go, we keep assuming. So we will go to the assumption. So I will assume. Yeah, and I will go back. Yeah, I agree with you. Which is thank you for that. I will assume the Bible will be not the way that it is. I will assume that the Bible will be more accurate. I will assume that the Bible will be more you know accurate in term, in terms of information. But because of all of these ambiguity around the Bible, all of these things ambiguity about it, then that's why we came to the point to this conclusion. We said. We don't know who are they. We don't know who are they. We can't tell if they are said or if they have said something or not. Now, going back to the point of the theology, because the brother Ali before he went, he was asking me certain question about God, and I was saying things about, for example, when we are defining God. Yeah, when we say God, the, defi the definition of defining God, that we know that God is all powerful, all knowing, has independent will. Meaning, no one is telling God what God should do, what God shouldn't do. Yeah, and as you Christians. Yeah, and and by the way, I wish one of the things I don't want to come, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, disrespectful. To you, but this is a discussion, and uh, we are just holding, you know, a discussion which is important. So when we are assuming now about that this is the word of God, yeah, about the assumption which is again, which is uh, doesn't make any sense. But anyway, let's say they say they define oh they define God in certain form. And apparently, 300 years after Jesus, people get together and voted about Trinity. 
they voted. So some of them they were binarian, some of them they were trinitarian, some of them they were unitarian. So they were they were they were all over the place at that time. So some of them they never believed. And still we have some Christians they don't believe Jesus is God. They believe Jesus was sent was a prophet of God. And some of them they believe they were like Paul. By the way, he was as well binarian. He was someone who believes only the Father and the Son. So he didn't believe you know the Holy Ghost. He added to it. So 300 years after they get together in the Council of Nicaea and they voted about all of these things and they kind of this, they have they conducted this conclusion about this now you could see a religion which was developing over a period of time so it was in, intact from the beginning so there is kind of development so there are things being yeah. developed to the, from the time of Abraham, to the to the conclusion yeah. no no not at that time of Abraham. we're not talking about that we're talking about it came to a conclusion meaning so the early christian in the in the early the early church fathers in the first 300 years, they were never they were not trinitarian generally, they were not like that. So the point is when you go back to the early church, they were not trinitarian. What did you where where the hell you got the trinitarian from? Where the trinity came from? If the early church father they were not like that, so it means things being added to it. Not just only it wasn't as it is. So going back to the definition of divine. I mean, it doesn't follow that things yeah. being added to it. Yeah. It, it just follows that humans are uncovering it in time. But it was true from the beginning. It's just our knowledge of it and our understanding and our articulation It was the true according to who? Just true, just in the sense of reality. Just to the fact, if it, not to who, not to anyone, just the truth. It was the truth since the creation of the universe that there was three persons in one. And I actually have a question. So your question about authenticity of the Gospels, do you apply the same to uh, Moses? Do you expect the same level of uh, intellectual and um, scholarly rigor to the stories of Abraham, of Moses, and of all the other holy prophets of Islam, or is, now, it, just, is it just Jesus? No, actually, we need to understand as well, there are, uh, Judaism as well, it has their own issues, and the Torah, and all, it has their own issues as well. Yeah. But, but, we, we, no, but, no, but, but we apply, when we apply the standard to Islam, it's not the same. As the standard of Islam, we apply a very high standard in terms of this, that first the Quran was written at the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Quran was preserved in two ways. The Quran was preserved in orally, like verbally, people memorized the Quran at the time of Muhammad, and now we have over than 15 million on earth. So how did Muhammad One second, know I didn't about finish. Jesus? I didn't finish, because he talks about Jesus, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, we talk about because of God. Because but then we say the same, the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. The God, the Spirit of God. Yeah, that's my point. The point is, Muhammad, so Muhammad, you know, one second. We believe Jesus, peace be upon him, was inspired by God. We believe God will inspire people, those are prophets of God. We have, we have no issues you know with this. His life? What? How do you know about Jesus' life? Through the Quran. From, from Prophet from, Muhammad, who was not there. You, from the Quran. From the Quran. Going back to the point, because the Quran showed us, showed us that it's true. But why? Well, why? Why is the Quran true? Okay, I will ask a question to you. I will ask a question to you. I'm asking the same question. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. How we know the Quran is true? If there is a mistake in one of the books, yeah, that historically, means historically, yeah, historical, well, historical mistake. Yeah. Then in that case, it's not, it's not something is reliable. Correct? Correct? You agree? Uh, no, not necessarily. His, I'm talking about historical mistake. Yeah, a massive, a massive, a massive historical mistake. Okay, big one, yeah, yeah. Big one. Yeah. Can you tell me what is the title of the king at the time of Moses? Actually, not sure. In the, in the, from the, from the gospel, from, from, uh, from the Bible. What is the title of the king at the time of Moses? I don't know. Pharaoh. 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 Right. Are you familiar with Pharaoh? Yeah, but Pharaoh just means king. What's his name? No, no, no. One second. I will tell you now. So, what was the title of the king at the time of Moses? You said Pharaoh, correct? Mission in the Bible. You, you said that. It's mission in the Bible. Shall we get the Bible? Sure, sure, sure. sure. Shall we get the Bible? Yeah, yeah, no, it's Pharaoh, but like I said, Pharaoh is just a title. We don't have to. Like, that, that's fine. That's fine. Let's agree. On, that's it's a title, okay? okay? Let's agree. It's a title, correct? The title of the ruler. One second. Sure. Okay. What was the king at the time of Joseph according to Bible? Pharaoh, yeah. According to the, I'm not, I'm not bringing from this. Again, it means king, not, not king. One second. We'll talk about it means over. It doesn't mean. We'll talk about what it means. Let's leave about what it means. What not mean. But you're saying name, and I'm just saying that's not technical. No, no, no. It's by the way the title. By the way, sure. the, by the way, Caesar was a title for yeah, the king. Exactly. Yeah, it was title yeah. for the king. Yeah. yeah. So Caesar is not necessarily a name of a person. Yeah. Caesar, Julius Caesar, whatever. He was Caesar means a king. Yeah. So Pharaoh was a title for a king. Yeah. At the time 
time of Moses yeah. and Pharaoh was a title of a king at the time of Joseph, correct? According to the Bible, correct? Correct? Agree? Happy days? Okay. Now, we have in the Quran, Quran, we have certain information about Moses and, and, and Joseph. Peace be upon both of them. You will find the story of Moses scattered around the Quran. Scattered around the Quran. And all the time talking about Pharaoh and Moses, Moses and Pharaoh, Moses and Harun, and Aaron and, and Pharaoh. No problem. Which goes with the story of the Bible. But we have one chapter, is called the chapter of Joseph. It's only a single chapter in the Quran talking about Joseph. Then suddenly, God, Allah, changed the tone talking about a king and he didn't use the title for again so we're talking about joseph and the king king and so it was there so in the past 200 300 years ago the christian criticized muslim they said your quran has mistakes it, you have to adjust your quran it has to be pharaoh it is consistently the, the ruler of egypt were pharaohs all the time and this and that we said if it came from god we believe it if it came from allah we believe it and we lift it until both of you are English, correct? You're from England? Where are you from? Australia. Huh? Australia. Where? Australia. Australia, okay. So, uh, so, until an Englishman from this country, 100 years ago or so, he went and discovered, have you heard about Risotto Stone? Have you heard about Risotto Stone? Risotto Stone. Risotto Stone. Yeah. So, see that's, those are Christian you know, sometimes. You know, that's how they are. Yeah? So until until they dismantled in Risotto Stone, it has the old hieroglyphic language to old Greek language to Latin. So he dismantled the old hieroglyphic language and taught and start understanding what was written on all of these monuments, on all of the uh, pyramids and things like this. Yeah. So he he had the favor to do this, and people they actually follow his lead with this. Yeah. Now listen to this, and that is the key thing. Then we discovered, and all it was discovered, they said the historian, they said, it is impossible, impossible, yeah, for the king at the time of Joseph to be titled Pharaoh. Impossible. You know what means? They said it is something, if you speak to historian and you say the king of Joseph was Pharaoh, will laugh at you. You'll say, what, what nonsense of this? Because they will say the title of, of the king at the time of Joseph, because the, the leadership or the, the people who ruled Egypt at that time were the Hexos. The Hexos, they are a Mediterranean dynasty which took over Egypt and they never used title Pharaoh at all whatsoever they never and even if you say they will laugh at the history now seriously now if you say if you say now during that time the Pharaoh of Egypt was this they will say what nonsense are you talking about what kind of big mistake are you talking about and, yeah and then and then later on when ancient Egyptian when they when they took over Egypt again they introduced the title Pharaoh so it was in there so it was introduced later on. Now the question is, the Quran got it right. The Quran is talking about king at the time of Joseph, and it was consistent about king at the time of Joseph, and was consistent about Pharaoh at the time of, of Moses. It was consistent in both places. Where the Bible talking about Pharaoh in both places? Who got it right and who got it wrong? And honestly, I want to be honest, who got it right? It would be nice if in this conversation, you would attempt to engage with us because I could have stopped you 10 minutes ago. I'm totally fine with the Old Testament. I think there are mistakes in the Old Testament historically. So you had the whole story. Totally fine by me if, if the Old Testament has mistakes. So, so, so you, you believe, you believe, you, well, let's go back to the point. Okay, if, if a text, if a text, yeah. huh? we're very comfortable with But you said initially, if a text has historical mistakes, I don't accept it, correct? No, 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 you asked and I said and I said if there is a I said if there is a mistake then I don't care. And then you had to say big mistake and then I was like fine, sure. But, but that's a big that mistake. Is not, it's not a big mistake. Is that a big mistake? It's a One title second. that means king. You just no no, it doesn't mean king. No no go now. If you travel to Egypt now, if you go to Egypt now and you say this, they will laugh at you. 
they will they will say to you that's a big mistake because it's not, it's just not like me. like to say can I say about the queen Caesar can I say now can I say she is Caesar the Caesar can I say no no they will laugh at us again she's a queen they say it's a queen they have used this they ha she has this title you, you, you understand she, we cannot use she's empress I cannot use this for her yeah, yeah? And that's actually one of her titles until kind of recently yeah, yeah. but anyway yeah. empress uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, during Victoria is. time but yeah. yeah but the point is I cannot as well use for example like there are some uh, some African titles for for kings they say they have some some titles. I cannot see is the Pharaoh she's the Pharaoh of England can I use that it's just, it's just not convincing like, can I say can you say now say. can you go now and say about the queen she's the Pharaoh of England it's just not a big mistake it I'm is a big totally mistake comfortable with People, you, you, talk, you are comfortable with any mistake it's fine I'm not talking about I'm talking about about the historical mistake and there is a historical mistake to give someone a title doesn't belong to them it's a historical just like now to say about the king she's the pharaoh of, of England she's not the pharaoh of England quickly, quickly. He, he wants like to say what's, what's the, the threshold that you, you know what after this, this threshold this book is not like reliable not trust this book to be the word of God because we're not talking about any book we're talking about, about salvation what is the mean for the book to be a word of God the 100% it means it's, not, well, it's, it's God perfect. It's God perfect. So it's God perfect. It's God perfect. Is His word perfect? He uses human beings to speak. That's what we believe. And one second, I thought He uses Jesus. Okay. So people, human beings write it down. Kind of what I was saying before that God elevates everyday people who do make mistakes in order to communicate His love to His people. And that I just think I'm. Look, I am going to try and love you guys, but I'm going to make mistakes in that, right? Like I'm going to try and sacrifice and to elevate you and to show the love of God to you but I am going to make mistakes and I just think that that applies to people throughout history including the authors of the gospel and I have no trouble and, and including the authors of the Torah I just think it's absolutely fine for me and it tracks with my idea of God that he uses everyday people and he works his power through them and it's, and I understand I know Islam to the extent that that's not what you believe and that's fine all we've established is that we differ in this. Of but course, we're not, different. We're but, different. But, but we're not, we don't worship the same God, be, by the way. But, but I, I understand. But what I'm just trying to say is what we were saying is that we could have stopped you and said, we, we're fine with this, but we let you go because we do want to hear what you have to yeah, say. Yeah, that's good. That's and, thank you for, and, thank you for that's, that. That's fine, but it's just something that doesn't matter to Christians because we have a different idea of how God operates and how, how God speaks to us. And we already know that. Like, we both are intellectual people. We know that we differ on that particular point, and that's one difference between Islam and Christianity. And that's Fine, and so I don't think we're going to get any anywhere on that. You know, one second, one second. Uh, you know, I will tell you something. That's what we do have to leave pretty soon. We're actually going to church, um, so we do have to leave. Yeah, okay. I will. I will. I'll, 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 I'll leave you in peace. All what I wanted just to ponder on this: the, the three things about when we say when God is Almighty, which it does not apply on Jesus. When, when God is all-knowing, apparently Jesus is ignorant about certain things, about the hour and certain things, which he mentioned this. When, he, when people ask him, when is the hour? He said, no one knows about the hour. Only the Father knows about that, neither the Son nor the So he's ignorant about certain things. And as well, he doesn't have an independent will. And yet, you mention he's God regardless, whatever it is. You see, this is the, that's a problem. That's why I will say to you, and again, I will invite you, read the Quran. It's worth just to read and to look into it. Yeah, yeah. It's worth to look into it. I will say the thing I will leave with you is that Jesus loves you. Jesus is Of course he loves me because way. we defend his honor. He of course he loves us. Way to salvation. We have no way, we have no doubt that Jesus loves us as Muslims because we are the true believers in him as a prophet, as a prophet and messenger of God. As a messiah. As a messiah. We believe he's a messiah. We, have, we believe, by the way, we believe he's a messiah, by the way. We, we have no issues with this. Yeah, but sacrifice, that's something. Yes. No, uh, no, no, no. I witnesses. Anyway, anyway, thank you so much. Thank you for this conversation, and have a you know a lovely day. I look after this. All right, all right. Thank you so. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Look after yourself. Anyway, we had interesting conversation. Alhamdulillah. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept from us and you, and ask Allah Azza wa Jal that to guide the people to Islam.